Okay, welcome back. Now just a very brief recap. We were dealing in the last video, we knew that simple harmonic motion arises from a parabolic potential energy curve, but not all potential energy curves are so simple. So using the conditions of a local minimum and small displacements about that local minimum, we're able to do a Taylor series expansion for an arbitrary potential energy curve. And we found that with these conditions, you can get that the potential energy will be parabolic. And this parabolic potential energy curve, well, this approximation is used in almost all simple harmonic motion approximations. So the next question is, how do we get from this parabolic potential energy to our simple harmonic motion? In order to do that, we're going to have to talk briefly, well, very briefly, about conservative forces. Conservative forces come out come up a lot in like uh, I think it'd be multivariable calculus or vector calculus, and they have a fairly rigorous mathematical definition. But you can think of conservative forces as forces that store energy in different places, like our elastic like Hooke's force. And the main property that we're going to exploit with conservative forces is that they can be described with the equation that the force is equal to the negative derivative of potential energy with respect to displacement. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our general value, our general expression for poten uh, potential energy for simple harmonic motion into this and see what force is a res uh, do we get, we get as a result. So let's just first off just take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x, so we're going to get negative 1 half times 2x times, as I said before, although this looks like a function, since we're evaluating this term, it's actually just a value or a constant. So we're just going to carry that along. Uh, second derivative of x, with res sorry, of u with respect to x at x is equal to 0. So now we get that this 1 half cancels with this 2, and we're left with force is equal to negative. Uh, I'm just going to bring this over here. du, uh, d squared u of dx squared at x is equal to 0 times x. Now this should hopefully look familiar, because this is the general form of our restoring force. If you notice, this force is proportional to the displacement from equilibrium, but it's proportional in the well, but it's in the opposite direction. And like we said before, it's general because uh, we have this constant term here. And in different physical systems, this constant can take on different values. Like we found in the mass and spring system, that this second derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to zero is just our stiffness of the spring k, which actually holds true. If we plug in k here, we get that f is equal to negative kx, which is just our Hooke's force in for our mass and spring system. So here we have the general form of our restoring force that results from this general form of our parabolic potential energy. So now, how we have our force. How do we get this back and forth off simple harmonic motion or simple harmonic oscillation from this? Well, we have to apply Newton's second law, which is that F is equal to MA. And this also holds true for like the rotational version of Newton's second law, but Let's just plug this in anyways. We're going to plug the general form in here to get a, like, the general form with Newton's second law. So we're going to get that negative second derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to 0 times x is equal to m and our a. That's just going to be the second derivative of our displacement with respect to time. 
So I'm just going to rearrange this, this equation a little bit. I'm going to bring this, uh, I'm just going to flip uh, the sides around and divide by m. So we're going to get that the second derivative of, f, of x with respect to time is equal to negative 1 over m second derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to 0 times x. Now it's important to point out that this mass, that's just a constant term. In this second derivative thing, that's also a constant. So all of this is just a constant. And we can replace it with a constant with the same value. Let's call it omega squared. So we get the second derivative of x with respect to time is equal to negative omega squared x. This is the characteristic differential equation that describes all simple harmonic motion. And we're able to get that from our potential energy and our conservative force. So with this differential equation, we know the solution to this. This solution to this is just going to be x is equal to a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. That's one solution. Or we could rewrite in the amplitude phase form if we like and say that x is equal to c times cosine omega t minus phi. But there we have it. This is the equation that describes our simple harmonic motion. So let's just recap to really, really hammer in what we did. We defined simple harmonic motion. We said that you can uh, get simple harmonic motion if you have small displacements about a stable equilibrium. And we found that small displacements about a stable equilibrium implied a parabolic potential energy. And from this parabolic potential energy, you can get a restoring force. And from this restoring force, you can, you can get this characteristic differential equation. And from this characteristic differential equation, you can get the equations that describe the simple harmonic oscillation. And this holds true for all, like, all different types of simple harmonic, well, all different systems, not just the mass and spring system. And we're actually going to look at different ex uh, physical examples that display simple harmonic motion in this next video. And if I may say so myself, that wrapped up everything fairly nicely.